This sonnet was written by Hopkins when he was in Liverpool in 1880. In this poem, the happy Randall is the chief character. By profession, he is a blacksmith who makes horse shoes. He was healthy and happy, but after receiving Holy Communion, he fell sick and died soon after. The poet attended him during his last illness. He also attended his last hours as a priest. So this poem represents the poet's priestly meditations on death. The visits of the priests to the sick persons make them mutually dear to one another. The priests become fond of the patients and the latter also begin to love their priests. When Hopkins as the poet priest visited Felix Randall and spoke dear words in his ear, the words gave solace to him. Hopkins also tried to give relief to Randall by his caresses. The loving touch of the poet's hands stopped the flow of the tears of Felix Randall. Once Felix was strong man, but now he had grown helpless like a child. This makes the poet to think about the days of Randall when he was young. At that time, he was full of vigor and vitality. In his youth, Randall was big boned, hardy, and handsome. At that time, Felix Randall never imagined that he could fall a prey to such a sickness that will eat into his vitality and youth. He continued to work at his shop where his skill was acknowledged by one and all. Then with marvelous artistry of equivocation, that is double meaning, Hopkins uses the word sandal at the end of the poem, bright and battering sandal. He doesn't use the word shoes. That one word sandal brings in pictures of hooves of horses, not iron shod, but sandaled, battering, beating not the ground below, but flying with lightning in the skies towards heaven in the company of escorted by angels who are riding the horses lightning shot randall for whom salvation is assured is pictured as preparing for this last journey on horses not shod but sandaled now his name felix which means happy becomes appropriate felix randall is not worthy for the richness of its imagery and vocabulary there is a word mold for example which was both in dialect and in poetry used for the grave here this word has only a submerged meaning his mold of man is a metaphor from casting of metal particularly appropriate to a blacksmith's forge. Hopkins, with his own frail physique, always admired strong-bodied persons. The last three lines of the sonnet are magnificently evocative of the blacksmith in his prime physical strength. The word random evokes the unplanned casualness of the smithy, typical of Smith's life itself. The word grim combines reminiscence of the powerful and forbidding satanic rebels in the smoke of pandemonium. With its homely, widespread dialect use, caught, dirty, grim, covered with with suit or filth. Uncaught. The word fetal, which every customer would use to the farrier, means to make or to mend. Furthermore, the last few lines are so arranged as to impart to Felix Randall the stature and splendor of the magnificent horse he is shoeing. How the rhythm beats out at time the sledgehammer blows. Caught. Random grim forge, great grey dry horse. Uncaught. We may catch too the ringing of the horseshoe on the paving. The final phase of the poem is inspired. It transforms the dry horse from drabness to radiance as the sonnet reaches an impressive and exultant clause. Caught his bright and battering sandal. Uncaught.